It has some unique design features. Let's discuss them bit by bit. Hello, brothers. Today, we're looking at Toyota's BZ5 model. This is the base trim. Joy should probably be called Join. This is its key. All right, let's take a quick look at the car's exterior and interior. First, let's look at its front fascia. The entire design adopts. Toyota's Pure Electric Series adopts a family-style design called Hammerhead Grille Front, featuring surrounding daytime running lights, etc. In the middle section, I just checked, there are no lights that aren't lit. The lighting cluster uses an integrated headlight design with C-shaped daytime running lights. Both the high and low beam headlights are LED with integrated mirrors, and there are also air ducts designed on both sides of the bumper, which can reduce certain risks during driving. Additionally, the front bumper has two zero impact points. The overall vehicle dimensions are length 4780 meters with 1866 mil. Height 1510 meter, wheelbase of 2880 millimeters. It is categorized as a midsize SUV. The lines of the entire body look dynamic, and the overall design also gives a crossover feel. The suspension uses front McPherson. Rear multi-link independent suspension, but the chassis isn't visible. However, a plastic wheel cover is fitted outside and the tire size is 22560 R18 A1.8 size the charging port for the driver and rear seats supports both fast and slow charging it's too heavy let's take a look at its rear roof area it features two diffuser style designs and the taillights adopt an enveloping through taillight design at the trunk, it features a small ducktail-like shape that appears distinctly pointed, and overall, the rear design stands out as quite unique and distinctive. The trunk is designed to be opened manually, and when it is opened, it showcases a hatchback design that provides a relatively large opening, allowing for ample storage space. It's easy to place items inside. Here is the space when the rear seats are not folded. Additionally, below the panel, there are some onboard tools. The rear seats support a 4-6 split folding ratio. However, when folded, they are not completely flat. To lie down, you need to flatten it below. But it's perfectly fine to place more items by adding padding below them as needed. The front hood features a textured design and it is equipped with sound insulation foam. In the center of the front cabin, you can see a lateral stabilizer bar. This feature is rare in models at this price range. For the powertrain, it uses a front-mounted single-motor layout. The motor's total power is 200 kilowatts, with a total torque of 336 nanowatts. The battery used is a lithium iron phosphate battery. The battery capacity is 65.228 kilowatts. The door handle uses this type of electronic retractable handle. You need to press it once to pop it out and then open the car door. The rear view mirrors are equipped with automatic folding when the car is locked. Now let's take a look inside and see how it is, guys. Let's check out the entire interior design. It has some unique design features. Let's discuss them one by one. First, take a look at this 15.6 inch central control screen. It's overall clarity and smoothness when in use. Compared to previous Toyota infotainment systems, it's much improved. Moreover, this map uses Goud Map, which offers some obvious functions inside. It also has an app market where we can download some small applications we need. Additionally, there's a phone casting feature that allows it to connect with our mobile phones. The instrument screen is designed higher. This position is similar to a heads-up display showing real-time vehicle information and other data in the center. There's also a small screen here that displays the vehicle's startup status, including an indicator for the seat belt being unfastened. However, so far, I haven't found any others. Some of of its indicators are located on a round panel made of plastic. The panel can be manually adjusted up, down, forward, and backward. There are four-way adjustments. On both sides of the steering wheel, these buttons serve as left and right turn signals instead of the traditional stocks. If you need to signal a left turn, you need to press the left signal once, and to cancel it, you need to press it again, and then... Then, this paddle located on the left side is intended for operating the windshield wipers. If you desire to adjust the speed at which the wipers function, simply use this control. You adjust it on the central control screen for intermittent, low, high, or automatic settings. And then this paddle on the left side of the steering wheel is for the headlights. If you want to set it to high beams, there's an automatic high beam button, which is set on the central control screen. Then, the entire door panels are wrapped in this kind of soft material in leather. Above the entire instrument panel is a soft, caramel-colored material. The lower half is gray and leather wrapped. Below the central control, there's a place to put your phone, but the base model doesn't have it. Inside, there are two Type-C charging ports. It uses an electronic gear shift design. You need to press to shift gears. On the right side, there are two back mounts with limiters, and this is its electronic parking brake. Then, the central armrest box can hold about four phone cases, plus a 12V power outlet and a USB data port for plugging in a USB drive to listen to music. Below the center console, there's a cutout area where you can place some of our study materials or the like. The seats use this kind of leather mixed material. The edges are crafted from high quality leather, and the middle section is made of durable fabric with stylish yellow accents. You might not have noticed, right guys? Additionally, the seat belts are also designed in yellow. I guess they're trying to highlight a sporty feel for the interior. Then both front camera panels have built-in makeup mirrors 
mirrors but no backlights. In the center, a lighting lamp activates via air instead of a button, and the front passenger side features a pull handle for full operation. It features a sunroof design with a very large area that extends from the front all the way to the back. However, it cannot be opened and does not have a sunshade. In terms of safety features, this car comes standard with nine airbags across all models, including front passenger side airbags and a central safety airbag. Furthermore, this car is available with a LiDAR-assisted version. The intelligent system used is the Momenta 5.0 version. When there's an opportunity to test drive this car, I will share with everyone how its assisted driving performs. The door opening method inside the car is quite unique, featuring a mechanical catch. Press the door and it will open. Now I have adjusted the front seat to my normal driving position. As we all know, I am 1.72 meters tall. Let us proceed to the second row of seats in order to observe and evaluate how the available space performs effectively. There is still about two laps worth of distance, with small pockets at the back. The entire rear floor is completely flat. In the rear, there are separate air vents, two Type-C charging ports, and the rear seat backs are designed with three detachable headrests. There is no central armrest in the middle. The rear seat material also uses this kind of mixed leather. Take a look at the length. When I sit here, there's about two finger widths of space in the legroom. Currently, the Toyota BZ5 right, offers so six models. Kind of what kind of model would you choose? Feel free to discuss in the comments. What other cars would you like to see in the future? Like and follow. See you next time.